Hello. Today I would like to talk to you about the detrimental effects of using a heating pad during pregnancy. Now while electrical heating pads are a great invention and in most circumstances they work to alleviate sore muscles, pregnancy is one of the times that you don't want to be using an electrical heating pad. Now pregnancy is also one of the most exciting times in a couple's life. And while it brings happiness and joy, it also elicits concern, questions, and challenges. As a woman's body changes drastically to accommodate fetal growth, she suffers from increased stress on joints and muscles, particularly in her back, legs, and feet. Most women who have had this experience have consulted their doctor and have been advised not to use hot tubs or saunas to relieve this muscle discomfort. However, many doctors do not make clear the reason for not using this heat and that using this kind of heat may have some grave consequences. Now, I was a registered nurse for a long, long time, and many of my years were spent in the obstetrics department in a community hospital, as well as in an OB clinic. <clears throat> I had the pleasure of following a new mother from the realization of conception throughout the labor and delivery process. On occasion, I was the primary care caretaker of the newborn until discharge. During these years, I have seen newborns who have suffered from neural tube deficits that were later determined to be due to increased maternal core temperature during pregnancy. OTIS, the Organization of Teratology Information Specialists, is an organization that is dedicated to reducing fetal risk. Now, according to OTIS, hypothermia, or an increased core temperature over 101 degrees Fahrenheit, may occur for many reasons, like a fever due to illness or extremely heavy exercise, a use of a sauna, a hot tub, or of course, a heating pad. A recent Otis study has shown that an increased risk of neural tube deficits in women who have experienced high temperatures in the first trimester. <clears throat> Excuse me. In simple terms, the neural tube is the embryonic vertebrae from which the brain and the spinal cord develop. It should be obvious, then, that the health and protection of these embryonic cells are crucial throughout pregnancy. But, because the developing neural, neural tube closes sometimes between, sometime between six and eight weeks, it is the first trimester in which the pregnant mother must be the most vigilant. Now, there are many causes for NTDs, neural tube deficits. Prescribed medications, dietary issues, immunologic and genetic abnormalities, maternal obesity, diabetes, and, as I am discussing today, maternal hyperthermia. These all increase risk. It has been my experience that maternal hyperthermia is the least known cause of a neural tube deficit, and that is why I would like to bring the use of electrical heating pads to your attention. Now, hyperthermia increases NTD risk. This we know. The exact number of NTDs that are a direct result of maternal hyperthermia is impossible to determine. But studies have shown that about one or two out of every 1,000 births that result in a neural tube deficit are due to maternal hyperthermia. If those statistics seem low to you, keep in mind that specific causes of many cases of NTDs can't even be precisely determined. Therefore, many undiagnosed NTDs could also be due to maternal hyperthermia. Now I would like to discuss with you the specific conditions that can result from an NTD. First and foremost is spina bifida. Now I'm sure many of you have heard of this condition before, but for those of you who have not, spina bifida is when the spinal column fails to close during development. Now, while there are there different types of spina bifida, I'm going to discuss this in just general terms. This condition is usually diagnosed during pregnancy through a simple blood test, an amniocetesis, or a sonar, sonogram. Ultrasound. Yeah. You know. Uh oh. According to the Spina Bifida Association, the effects of Spina Bifida are different for every person affected. It often requires surgery to insult, insert a shunt to help drain excess fluid from the brain, and its symptoms also include full or partial paralysis, bladder and bowel control problems, learning disabilities, depression, and social or sexual issues. It is a lifelong condition. Although some people with spina bifida live long, normal lives. They're able to hold jobs, get married, have children, live a normal life. 
Now, I would like to show you some pictures. I'm trying to explain to you what spina bifida actually looks like. These are not graphic. First of all, I would like to show you, I hope you can see this. Well, let me see. Mm, there. All right, this is a picture. Let's say we cut a human being in half at the pelvis, much like in a magic show. And we are looking at the body from the bottom up. Okay, the pink area you see is just normal body tissue. The yellow area is the spiny bone, like your vertebrae. And then the blue area is your neural tube, which would soon develop into your spine. This is normal. You will see that the yellow bony spine completely encircles the blue area. Now, in spina bifida, it looks much like this. As you see, the yellow bony area does not enclose at the bottom, and therefore it exposes the neural tube to the outer, outer side of the body. In severe cases of spina bifida, there is a meninges seal, and that is when, as shown in this picture, the neural tube actually protrudes out the back of the child, and this would, this would be, this area here that's protruded would be on his coccyx, his tailbone. Okay, another um, neural tube deficit is called anencephaly. Now, anencephaly means without a brain, basically in Greek. Now, anencephaly is a less common but equally real consequence of maternal hypothermia. It is a devastating malformation that results in death, usually during delivery. Now, the uh, National Institute of Neurologic Disorders and Stroke describes anencephaly as a result of a neural tube deficit that occurs when the neural tube doesn't close on the cephalic end or the head end of the spine. So the child is born without a forebrain. That's the largest part of our brain and that leaves without being, if it doesn't develop, it leaves the rest of the brain exposed. Well, with this condition, of course, it is impossible for the infant to survive. Now, while these abnormalities are terrible and terrifying, the risks are real. The alternatives to using an electrical heating pad to relieve muscle pain and discomfort is easy. You can use warm, wet towels applied to the affected area. A warm shower or a bath is also helpful. And of course, there's always the relaxing massage. Many professional masseurs utilize a massage table that has been altered to accommodate pregnancy. Well, that pretty much concludes my presentation of the evils of a heating pad during pregnancy. I hope I didn't scare anyone with this information. My purpose was to raise awareness to a situation that is detrimental to a fetus and so easily avoided. There is no greater joy than the birth of a new baby. The avoidance of hypothermia during pregnancy is just one more step, a very easy step, to ensure the health, good health and development. Thank you. That's my healthy baby. That's my healthy new granddaughter. Yeah. She's 10 days old. She's a girl. Her name's Jacy. Thank you.